Finding the Equation of a Trend Line, Lesson 14.2b. We can use two points on a trend line to write an equation in slope-intercept form for the trend line. So this is slope-intercept form, if you remember. We have our y value, and it's equal to the slope multiplied by the x value plus the y-intercept b. Here we have our trend line, and we have our data points. So here are the steps to find the equation of a trend line. The first thing we do is find the slope of the trend line using the slope formula. Second thing we do is we find the y-intercept of the trend line using the slope-intercept formula. And last, we use the slope and y-intercept values to write the equation. This scatter plot and trend line show the relationship between the number of chapters and the total number of pages for several books. We need to write an equation for the trend line. Step one, we find the slope of the trend line using the slope formula and two points on the line. We can see we have a point here at 2 for x, 20 for y, and we have another point at 7 for x and 70 for y. We use the slope formula. The slope is equal to the second y value minus the first y value divided by the second x value minus the first x value. So we have 70 minus 20 and 7 minus 2. That gives us 50 over 5 and we simplify it to 10. The slope tells us there's an average of 10 pages per chapter. We also could have found the slope by counting the rise over the run. These are going by tens. We have a 20 here, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. We could have counted the rise. It's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units of 10 each, so that would be 50. And these are going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1s, so we could count the run, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to get 50 over 5, which is equal to 10. Now you may remember from previous lessons that the y-intercept, b, of the line is where the line crosses the y-axis. Our second step, we can use the slope-intercept formula to find the y-intercept. We have y is equal to mx plus b. We can find it with one point. So let's use the point 2 for x, 20 for y. We substitute in the values. We have y is 20, so we have 20 is equal to, we know our slope is 10, and our x value is 2, and it's plus the y-intercept b. And we multiply this and get a 20. So we have 20 is equal to 20 plus b. We subtract the 20 from each side to isolate b, and we get 0 is equal to b. And since the y-intercept is 0, it means there are 0 pages in a book that has zero chapters. After we did step one, we could just look at the trend line and see that it intersects. The line intersects the y-axis at zero. So that would be our y-intercept b at zero. But it's useful to use the slope-intercept formula to find the y-intercept b when we're not sure if it's zero or some other number. For step three, we use the slope and the y-intercept values to write the equation of the trend line. We know that the slope was 10. We know the y-intercept b, that was zero. Well, this plus zero isn't necessary. It's not gonna affect the equation, is it? Just adding zero. So we can just leave it off, and y is equal to 10x is the equation of the trend line. The y-value is equal to 10 times the x value. But what if there are no data points on the trend line to use for step one? Here we've got some data points and none of them are on the trend line. We just use the points of intersection of x and y that are on the trend line. If we look here, we've got one right here at 2 for x, 3 for y. It meets right there. And We've got another one at 4 for x, 6 for y right there. We've got another one at 
6 for x, 9 for y, right there. These are points along the trend line where x and y intersect. We can use any two of these points. We can use this 2, 3 and the 4, 6, or we could use the 4, 6 and the 6, 9. We could even use the 2, 3 and the 6, 9. Remember, there should be about the same number of data points above and below the trend line. This will give us the line of best fit as a line drawn close to most data points. Our slope will be more accurate if we choose points farther away from each other. Here we have points A, B, and C that are on this trend line, and A and C using this one and this one, or B and C, will give us a more accurate slope than if we used A and B, which are close together. We're finished with this lesson. We're moving on to the last part, 14.2c, making predictions with a trend line. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and of course, I hope you join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.